Let me bang you. I do let you bang. Hey, let me bang you. Let me bang you. Let you bang. Let me bang you. Let me bang you. Let me bang you. Greetings, Marys and Virgins. Go for Jesus. No for gay Jesus, people. Hey, I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time once again for your favorite mixed martial arts podcast. Recording out of Los Angeles, California, it's MMA Roasted with Adam Hunter. Who the fuck is that guy? What's up, people? We got a great new, brand new MMA Roasted podcast. Uh, it's going to be good. We got this kid, Garrett Armfield, who's actually fighting the guy who we had last week on. Uh, he's on mm-hmm. the show. Uh, and um, he's in the UFC. He's a badass. He uh, really, really good fighter. Is a 10 and 2. And then we got Destiny Yarborough, who uh, the beautiful um, football player who is a pro female football player slash fighter slash bare knuckle fighter. She's with us. Uh, we got the legend Don Fry is here. Don, your 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 uh, meme keeps going. By the way, of you throwing people out of the thing, saying, <laughs> "Just so you know." It's- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's funny. It's huge. That's funny. It's. I haven't it's- seen this meme. Yeah. What is it? Can you share oh, you it? See it? It's all over TikTok. He, he basically. Yeah, what's wrong with you, boy? Basically, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you did that. The, the the thing where like someone's annoying him. So he takes the guy and he rolls back and throws the guy like like off the screen, and he goes, "You didn't see that one? No. Oh, it's like it's everywhere. It's it's. Oh, I love it. It's yeah, so it's over. so popular on TikTok. It's so popular on TikTok. They're they're running me for president of China right now. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's hilarious, and it's like it's like whenever the boss asks me to. Stay. So basically, he takes the guy. He does like yeah. a, he falls on his back. He throws the guy off the screen, and then he goes, "Very quick, very efficient." And and, and like the only <laughs> way that like Don Fry can do it, it's it's all over the internet. Yeah, yeah. That, that I mean, it must it. It must be have it. like a billion hits. I, I mean, it's it's oh shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, anyway, I just got back from Arizona from Scottsdale. Uh, I was with the family. I brought my wife and kid. Oh, my thanks for your fucking information. If, dude, I told you like five times. Glad I got to see you. I told you five times. <laughs> when? I told you like, I don't know. You got to call me five times. Yeah, but I, I had the wife. You got to call me five times that day. I had the wife and kid, and I didn't want to. Uh, there, there was no way I was going to be able to go to Tucson with them. So that's the thing. Um, you know, I, I don't want you to have to drive all the way you up. You just didn't want your wife to meet me and throw rocks at you for the rest of your fucking life. <laughs> She would have left me in, in two minutes. We we watch Don Fry videos all the time. And my, my wife's not the biggest MMA fan, but she loves you, Don. Just so you know, she actually loves you. Of By course. the way, Don, so my birthday, <laughs> my birthday's on Monday. I'm celebrating it on Friday. We're going to an LFA fight. Do you want to at the Commerce Casino? Do you want to come? Where's the Commerce Casino? In California? Yes, yeah, in California. Yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Friday night, Saturday night, what? Friday night, Friday night. Let me check. Let me check my. Let me check my busy schedule. All right. Oh yeah. Now I invited. Yeah, I now I invited Bill, right? And I got like I got like five tickets. It's like gonna be me, hopefully Don, Bill, the boys. Right away, Bill goes, "Hey man, can I get an extra ticket?" So I'm like, uh, uh, "Why? Who do you want to bring? Uh, just some girl." Like he's that guy that brings the girl to the party, and I, this is after I already like offered to pick him up. I'm like, I'll pick you up and drive you, cause I. And then he goes, Can you bring this girl? I'm trying to impress, and I'm like, Really, dude? Like you're that guy? Like, Can you wear this hat, this and this jacket and tie? You know, when you pick me up. <laughs> hey, it was it was a simple question. You said no. I dropped it. But I mean, yeah. sir, like, I mean, you're that guy. It's like the boys' night, and you bring a date. Like, Bill, is that has that been your mo your whole life, or what? Unfortunately, probably has been. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Guilty. Meanwhile, I just, 
I did a show in, in you're Arizona, not, right? First you're not, of all, not all sweaty, Bill. What are you doing? You take the day off. <laughs> it's true or what? But now that you're going, Don, <clears throat> come on, man. Forget about it. Mm-hmm. What's that? Uh, now that you're going, I would never, I would never want a, a lady there. Oh no, hell no! Are you kidding? Uh, that's right. Don, Don's mom. Hide your wife. Hide your kids. Oh, dude, seriously. Hide your grandma. <laughs> hide your aunt. Hide everybody. <laughs> so, so meanwhile, your sheep are safe. Well, now that Bill's going, <laughs> so never mind. So I'm on stage, right? Uh, I'm on stage, and there's a, an older woman, right? There's like a group of five women. One of them has got to be in her 80s. And every time I do a joke, what? I can't hear you. What did you say? <laughs> what was that? And then I was like, uh, Miss, are you? Uh, she's like, I have horrible hearing. And I was like, Where's your husband? She goes, Well, he's not here, but he's blind. Right. So, like, right away. Right. So now, and then she keeps telling me. So he about hears for her. <laughs> then there's a woman wearing gloves, right? Right in the front, laughing at everything, wearing gloves. And I'm like, Why are you wearing gloves? She's like, you don't want to know. And I'm like, well, tell me. She holds up her her gloves. She's got no fingers. L- like, like she must have had diabetes uh, and, and they all fell off. Like, all her fingers. Adam, why are all the people at your show wounded? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like so many people they're, at your they're show. Slowly, they're they're they slowly they're, they're, they're trying to slowly commit suicide. <laughs> and now they're figuring, well, I'll do it quickly if I go into his show. Dude, just die in the fucking front row. Dude, I go. So then, right away, after I'm like, watching him to go kill himself, right away, I'm like, in front of a train. I'm like, you probably give great blowjobs, right? Because you, you go right, you know, you probably you know skip the hand jobs. Go and I'm and she's dying, and I'm like, do you have any extra rings? You know, and you know, I'm doing oh, my 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 OJ Simpson joke, which is OJ Simpson got cremated. He could finally fit in the glove. And then I was like, no offense to, uh, to, to the woman with the gloves, dude. Yeah, so yeah. What's going on? And then I and then I did a joke about uh, I'm like, you know, hey, you probably give great foot jobs, you know, cause you could jerk people off with your feet, because the joke I go, you know, one one time a girl, you know, gave me athlete stick. So then the girl goes, no, I'm missing a leg too, right? So she goes, <laughs> well, don't stand up and show us. We don't need to verify it. <laughs> What is this? Back to the future? Where like you look at the pictures and like everything is disappearing. <laughs> so, <laughs> dude, then I did a whole like who here eats vagina, and I, I told her boyfriend, I'm like, you might as well. She's gonna have nothing left pretty soon. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's fucking tight though. Yeah. yeah. Did yeah. she say how she lost her fingers and her leg? She said diabetes. Oh, yeah, yeah. that'll do it. Yeah, di- diabetes. Um, so then that was, that was, and then the lie burgers came. So this, this, like these two twins who are like adorable lesbian twins came to the show. Right. And uh, they're just the nicest people. Almost like they're, you ever meet someone that's like so nice. You think they're like an alien or something like they're, they're not human, you know, always smiling, cute. And they have an older sister who's a porn star who's now, (laughs) (laughs) her name is, her name is Dylan Ryder. Right. Uh, so she's a porn star. The lesbians' sisters are bare knuckle fight. Our UFC fighters are bare knuckle fighters, right? And the father is a huge Guthfield fan. Like he's a big Republican, like super. Um. So, but it's just I'm like they have three girls. Two of them are porn stars. Oh, no, one of them is a porn star. Two fighters, but the porn star is retired now because of Bitcoin. She said she made a lot of money in like Bitcoin, so she doesn't have to work anymore. Um, wow, and, well, but, that's good. <laughs> yeah, but she seemed very like together like super together um she didn't like my stormy so now she normal <laughs> kind of she didn't <laughs> like my stormy jokes because like i guess she like knows stormy they're like friends um so <laughs> of course <laughs> so, <laughs> what's uh, your stormy joke i had a bunch of them i said like basically stormy's doing stand-up comedy now like how do they get bring her to the stage like this next comic used to open for the president <laughs> and and then I go, I, I said, you know, Trump's got a gag order. She's got a no gag reflex order. And then I, 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 I said one where I said, you know, I don't even know why she's, you know, they're supposed to be, why she took the stand, supposed to follow the money, not the money shot. I just kept going with the stormy jokes. Yeah, yeah. Nah. Yeah, yeah. And I, I go, you know, at least Trump banged the porn star. Biden lied about banging, uh, you know, uh, Joan of Arc. His daughter. 
<laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah, fucking pedophile piece of shit. He did shower hey, with his daughter. That was weird. Just because you smell a lot of girls' hair doesn't make you a pedophile. He just he, he just likes he hair fucking products. showered. He showered when she was in her in her teens in her fucking Whoa. teens. There is something yeah. about that. There yeah, something. that's crazy. I, mean, I don't know if it was teens. I think she said it was. She was in her book. She was like, what's she? She was like five or six or something. But even, even, even. My, so, my daughter's three, and I don't want to be naked around my daughter. I think I've never too showered with my kid. My daughter, never right? once. Yeah. Never right. once. That's, I, yeah. that's when I quit. I quit drying off my oldest daughter, at, both of them at two. When they turn yeah. two, no more, you know, here's the towel, dry yourself off. But, well, yeah. but even, but even that, like, it's one thing if you're, if, if you're drying a kid off or, or you're giving them a bath, when you're showering with them, and you're a grown man. No, that's just crazy because there's, no, there's, there's kind of up. There's gonna be a lot of questions involved. Daddy, what's that? Or, you know, like yeah. it's just just all kinds of weird shit. Like you 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 don't you don't get naked in front of your kid. If, if I'm if I'm changing and my kid walks in, I go Violet. You know, privacy, please. You know, and um, yeah, yeah, dude. It's just uh, and it is weird. <laughs> it, the whole thing is weird. Daddy, and, what's that? That's half a penis. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the other dude, it's always hard though. But I'm sure Bill, you know, having a daughter is that uh, when you're um, when you when she has to go to the bathroom and you're like, okay, I gotta take her sometimes in in like the men's the men's room. Yes, and yes. there's other men there because I'm not gonna go in the girls' room. You know, I'm not gonna have like a grown man in a girls' bathroom. So I have yeah. to like. So then right. it's like so it's, it's hard because sometimes there are guys in the urinal, you know, and then they're just mm -hmm. standing and you're just like, you know. So I got to take her into a stall, obviously, mm -hmm. and uh, it just it's just and it, which is always going to be disgusting. Also, yes, you know, always, and, man, it, it's uh, it's almost like they really should have parent bathrooms, you know, but uh, well, they they do have those family bathrooms at, at like a lot of airports and stuff, but they're always occupied by a homeless person. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, truly. But that, I, I go into the I go into the women's room sometimes. I honestly do. I'm like, I don't give a shit. Really? I identify as a woman right now that my daughter shit her pants. <laughs> I I go to the men's room because I just don't want anybody, any girl seeing me or, or but why is there I don't even want a thing. But it's just uh it's it is it does get a little bit confusing sometimes. Um anyway, so uh did you watch the fights? Everyone watch the fights? I watched the fights this time. Don? <laughs> no. All right. You know there were fights. Oh, perfect. All what right. Day so, today. so, so, so See, based, Don based, doesn't have to because he's a legend. I have to because I have to earn my spot every week. So, <laughs> Derek Lewis, right? Which, which he's the most frustrating fighter in the world because he has that knockout power. But he'll lose. He'll either lose every round or he'll lose every round and then knock you out. I don't think he's ever yeah. won a round, like ever. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> So he, uh, he 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 loses his first two rounds. This guy not It looks like it's going to be one of those fights where he just loses by decision. Of course, he clips him. He knocked him out. Took off his cup. Threw his cup into the third row. Right. Oh. Then then took off his pants. So now he's just wearing his like black, like almost like bicycle shorts or what? What, what would you call them, uh, Bill? Yeah, like boxer briefs, basically. So then he takes his shorts. And while the guy's knocked out, he starts fanning the guy, <laughs> like to, to like revive him. <laughs> I, well, the I, smell, the smell don't wake you up, nothing will. <laughs> At like what a, point is, is he just gonna fuck a ring? Sauce. What point is he just gonna fuck a ring girl? Like, like, like right, he, yeah. If he dropped his pants and had a boner, and some chick started sucking him off, like how surprised would you be? Probably well, not. Then he then he mooned the audience. He oh yeah, he the whole oh crowd. yeah, he, he mooned the entire St. Louis. <laughs> He's like, "Thank you, St. Louis, for letting me show me your, my ass." Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, he he's a buddy. I, power, I guess. Power is the last to go. Well, Don, hey, who's hey, the hey, Don, I have a question. Yeah, have you ever grappled with somebody that they're not that skilled, but you just can't submit them because of their yeah, size yeah. or their strength? Yeah, yeah. It just, I'm, it just aggravates the shit out of you. Yeah, you know. Well, it, I think he's so like that guy because the guy he, he was mounted. He had his back. He just couldn't submit him. 
Yeah. <laughs> Don, Don, who has the most power out of all the guys you fought? Who hit you the hardest? Uh, fuck. Hit or just your strength, power, strength? What are you talking about? Like, who punched you the hardest? Oh, uh, that'd be Jerome LeBanner. He punched me the hardest, you know? But yeah. um, Ken Shamrock and Mark Coleman were the strongest. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, they are so fucking powerful. It's unbelievable. Wow, I, I knew Coleman. I didn't think you would say Shamrock, though. Shamrock's, uh, Shamrock is unbelievable athlete, man. Unbelievable strength. Just a fucking amazing machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so that is then also on the card. So, uh, Joaquin Buckley won, right? So Joaquin Buckley won. It was, you know, he fought in St. Louis. He's from St. Louis, Don. And it's one of those things where like, uh, I think he was trying too hard in the beginning. Like he was just wanted it too much. And then once he settled down, he, he, uh, won the fight and, and got the stoppage. But then afterwards he calls out Conor McGregor, right? Which is a, such a weird call out because, McGregor's already got a fight, and they're just not. But UFC's probably not going to give him the Conor McGregor fight. But maybe it's not the dumbest call out. How, how far? How far apart in weight are they? Uh, Buckley's one seventy. I I think Conor's fighting at one seventy, right? Is I mean, is that where the fight's at? Is know. that one seventy? Uh, Interesting. So now. Everyone says, "Oh, that was the dumbest call out ever!" Right? That's what Daniel Cormier said. That so now he's fighting with Cormier and everybody online. So they're, they're going, they're going back and forth, right? So let me see. Uh, here, I'll show you guys. I'll just, it's just, it's becoming like the weirdest feud right now. First of all, I mean, maybe it's not even that bad of a call out because everyone's talking about it, right? So, exactly. It's a great call out. But, but everyone's saying, oh, that was the dumbest, call, the most random call out. You're not going to get that fight, this and that. Well, he's right. not going to get the fight, but it doesn't make it a bad call out. So, uh, right. Look at him. Look, if he did get the fight, look at the money he made. Damn it. Yeah. So he's right. so smart. I'd like to call out Conor McGregor. Fuck, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> so I guess DC and Bisbing and Chael, he goes, he writes, let it be known, your mama's raised some hoes. <laughs> Y'all really trying to twist up my words, knowing damn well what I said in that cage. But it's okay. We could all have some fun. 100, and then I guess, I, I guess, is that like the, what, what's this? Is that is that like the Wakanda? I don't know what that is, but whatever. So then DC <laughs> writes, shut up, pussy. Uh, maybe, <laughs> listen, you had a dumbass call out. You're getting talked by, about by three of the biggest voices in the game. Maybe, listen. It was the worst call out in history. <laughs> Don't let winning a few fights at 170 get you too excited, bruh. Don't mention Audrey. I Who's guess Audrey. I think that maybe DC's mom, maybe, because he said your mama's raised some hoes. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So then he wrote, Yeah, you funny, pretending like you don't know what I'm talking about. Still, I don't care if you say it's the worst call out. The point is you saying I was calling a woman grandma's hoes. Nah, you all the hoes. <laughs> so, so, I mean, he did say your mama raised some hoes. So, some that's a good right. point. Yeah, that's so semantically, like, he's found. Even I understood that first time. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what's going on in the MMA world, as far as like those guys. Okay, so Don also they had a fight where this guy, this guy. uh uh, what's it, Despain or Despain? So they had this guy from uh, from Cuba that was a black belt and a gold medalist in karate, like the best karate champion ever. He had three fights, and they were like his last three fights total twenty two seconds. And the guy's six foot nine or something, or seven foot two, tallest guy ever, right? Nobody wanted to fight him, right? So they bring in a guy named uh, this guy, uh, 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 Cortez Acosta, who was a major league or minor league baseball player that could throw like 103 miles an hour. But everyone got mad at him because the last fight that he had, it was against uh, Arlovsky and he was winning, but he was dancing and being kind of a dick. So I'm pretty sure the UFC got mad at him and they threw him to the wolves. Well, the black belt, well, I mean the um, Olympian in karate couldn't defend a takedown. I mean, his hands are low and he got taken down 
first round, second round, most of the third round, and lost a fight. And Dana White's like, I'm not impressed with the other guy, but he, I mean, the guy kind of got exposed. I mean, now there's yeah. a straight blueprint on how to beat him. Uh, he couldn't get he couldn't get back up once he was taken down. No, I, that was the fight to miss. Yeah, no, it looked like he had like level zero. I mean, it, he had no way of getting up. I mean. Yeah. Which is crazy because you know that's what people are going to do when you're. Uh, but yeah, he got taken down and ridden out the entire time, uh, every every round. I mean, he basically was like, okay, but the guy wasn't going for submissions really, and and he, and he wasn't going for the stoppage. He was sort of just holding him. L little lay and pray. Uh, yeah. So uh, I mean, Don, that's what you would have told him to do, right? If you're fighting a guy who's a karate gold medalist. Yeah, and he got some bitch off his feet. Yeah, you're damn right. <laughs> so so that's what happened um and then chase hooper chase, chase hooper, hooper my man dude chase hooper he's a kid the ufc signed when he was like 18 years old he had no striking he was great at jiu-jitsu somehow got really good at striking i think he's been training with wonder boy out in uh south carolina and looked like a k1 champion they, they put him up against a, a kickboxing champion and he knocked him down with the right hand and just beat the living shit out of him for two rounds, which and then they stopped it. Okay, it was nuts. You, you, Bill, you watched that fight? Well, he had a he, he had yeah he had a he he got him in a darts choke, and the guy, well, the guy said he didn't tap, but he did. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what you think about this side. The guy hit his back like this once, and the ref called it a tap. But then the guy was like, "What the fuck? I didn't tap." And he got he protested because he said it's not a tap. Yeah. And some people were like, "Well, you got to hit it twice to be a tap, or three times to be a tap," but. That's not true. You can tap once. Isn't it once? Yeah. Don, Don, I think, did you I ever think, tap, Don, you ever never tap, right? I think it was I think it's three times. That's oh. when it started, but who knows? I mean, maybe it, the guy might have been screaming, you know. Yeah, the referee's yeah. there, you know. Could have yeah. been gurgling. Who knows? You know, shit. And it, yeah, he can't get that mad because he was getting the crap beat out of him anyway. And Chase Hooper was able to get like he was able to mount him at will, basically. Yeah, and the guy couldn't get out. So that was. I crazy. just like the idea that like it, it, it jujitsu can be relevant again. In the oh, of course, <laughs> of course, of course. Dom, like a dark was... choke. That's sweet, man. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, by the way, I saw Henry Cejudo over the weekend. I, I went to his gym. It was cute. He was playing with. He had his little daughter with her. His daughter's name is America, and she's like she's two and a half. And then I had Violet, and then his daughter just wanted to wrestle. And Violet had no idea what she was doing, but she kept going for the <laughs> takedown. And, and, and then my daughter was like su super gentle. I'm not sure she's a wrestler or jiu-jitsu. She's into gymnastics and swimming, but uh, she's very, very, um, she's not very, like, she doesn't mind it when I throw her on her head. Like I always flip her around and throw her and like yeah. all kinds of stuff. And, but, and, but she doesn't seem to really want to wrestle, but Henry's yeah. daughter kept going for the takedown and then top <laughs> position. Um, Don, Have you ever tried to get your daughter into jiu-jitsu? Maybe. I, definitely, I want to get her into an individual sport. I think gymnastics and dance are kind of the thing to do. You know, um, but, I, you know, I, I think individual sports are really important. I just don't know if wrestling. Don, did your kids wrestle? No, no. Did, no. did, you, did I, you? I was kicked out of the house um, <laughs> when they got to high school. And um, so I wasn't there. Um, to try and get him into wrestling. Why did they kick you out of the house? You'd have to ask my ex-wife that. <laughs> I mean, why do you think she would say? <laughs> what? Why would oh, she? Oh, well, she would say. What well, she would say when we were alone and nobody was around. You're just not the man you used to be. You're not as tough as you used to be. You don't have the pain tolerance you used to have. Um. You uh, just you can't. I don't think you can provide for the family anymore. Yeah. You know? Oh, oh wow. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Can you imagine our our girl saying you're not as tough as you used to be, Adam? Uh, well, I mean, I <laughs> no, she was. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, my wife, my, I'm not as tough as I used to be. I mean, I would say, yeah, obviously, I'm fucking 25 years older than I used to be. I, I, I would, I would hope not. <laughs> Um, so Don, when Ken Shamrock attacked you here, right? What happened? Yeah. Here? What, what, what happened here? 
He just he, he flipped. He, he dropped his cookies, man. He went nuts. But 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 like this was but how 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 much before the fight was this? The night before. This was the night before the fight. The night before so, the fight. What did you say to him? I hell, I don't know. I was talking all kinds of shit, but um, <laughs> I wasn't gonna let him. I wasn't gonna let him get, get his hands on me because I didn't want to. I didn't want him to get hurt and pull out a fight, you know. And, and I sure the hell didn't want him to hurt me, and I have to pull out a fight. But why did they get you in the? Why did they get you in the ring? That's stupid. They they just they were promoting the fight, and they put us both in the ring at the same time. It was stupid. So uh, I want you guys to come down and uh, so here you guys are. Comment, please. He's talking shit. Okay. okay, you go first. I want you to say something. I guess they thought because we both wore buttons on our shirts, we okay. were civilized. You know, we. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love your Magnum PI. Uh, all this crap. Yeah. Fourth to come, I want the bell to ring, so as I can go in there and do what I do best. And uh, I'm a fighter. I do it. That's what I am. I'm a professional. This motherfucker over here is not a professional. He likes to bring people's families into it. And you know what? You're gonna pay for that, all right? You should not kick a fucking sleeping dog. Now, what? Uh, what did he say? What did you say about about Ken's family? I didn't say about family. I said about him. I said you're fa- you're you know you're a bad son to your father. You know you're 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 a bad father to your son. You know you're you're a bad brother. You know, to your brother, I just, you know, I, I said about him, but I, you know, didn't include his family. Oh, okay. Got it. Okay. So it wasn't like you're, you're, you don't say, oh, your mom's or whatever. It was no, like, oh, no, no. Oh, oh, see, see, that's the difference in MMA fighters back then and now. See, t- now people are saying your wife's a whore, this, that, this, and that. Back then it was, no, you're a, you're an asshole. I like that. That's right. You better bring it all. Right. I'm gonna be in there to fucking die. Yo. Wait, did he spit on you or did you spit on him? Nobody spit on anybody. Oh, okay. okay. There's no spit, no spit. Now, did you think he was really in there to die? You know what? Who knows with Ken Shamrock? Yeah. It, it just depends on what side of the bed he wakes up on, I guess. <laughs> Hold on. I, this is actually really funny. He wasn't he wasn't there to make you know make friends with me. Oh no, you know, absolutely not. Hold on, here we go. There's been a rumor that you stole the mustache from Freddie Mercury. Is this true? Ken <laughs> I respect you because you Ignored a rumor and you came directly to me and asked <laughs> because we both know how craps get started by rumors. Now, I heard the rumor that you lost your virginity to Freddie Mercury. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no. Ken Shamrock lost his virginity to a man long before he started dating Freddie Mercury. So you and I both know not to believe rumors, Ken. Oh my God! I mean, <laughs> you, never, you never saw that? No, I never saw that. that. Right. So he says you stole your mustache. Like that was back in old seven or oh eight. So he says you <laughs> stole your mustache, Freddie Mer- Mercury, and you said you fuck Freddie Mercury. <laughs> of course, he's gonna. Don get- Fry wins that exchange by a mile. <laughs> oh, <laughs> did you did you come up with that, or, or did someone tell you to say that? No, they, I come up with that. They, they came out to interview me, you know, and then they said, uh, we had Ken say something to you. And I says, well, can I watch it? And they said, yes. Yeah. So they showed it to me. I go, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, oh, my God. Now, how did he react when you said that you fucked Freddie Mercury? I don't know. That, that I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, that's not even a close. Uh, I mean, him, you stole your mustache from Freddie. That's Mercury. the best because because for him, for Shamrock, he, you know, he thought about that long and hard. And that was his big, big thing that he was going to come at him with. But not only did he say that you lost, you fucked him, but you fucked someone before that. Like you got him <laughs> twice. It wasn't even that yeah, you fucked Mercury. You said, you said not only. Right. You, you got him <laughs> twice. <laughs> 
<laughs> I know. I felt bad for him. Oh, that is brilliant. That was a perfect joke. That that's hilarious. Oh my god! You didn't god. lose your virginity to Freddie Mercury. You fucked a guy long before you fucked Freddie Mercury. <laughs> this is fucking genius. Yeah, I mean, if he would have just said, "I heard you fuck Freddie Mercury," that would have been. Oh. Fun. But he said, "No, no, guy, yeah, you didn't lose your virginity. You've been fucking guys your whole life." <laughs> <laughs> so good. The only look, Ken Shamrock was the, the one of the the best of all time. I, I yeah, still, he was. Yeah, I still get annoyed by that 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 uh kimbo slice fight that he had because that fight i i'm pretty sure was a work because it, yeah i mean he had when he lost to kimbo slice i don't remember that yeah but it was like he's such a prideful guy that it was almost like he let kimbo win but showed him that he that, that he could have won one because he had him in a mm. rear naked choke like he had kimbo dead dead then on arrival in a rear naked choke and then somehow kimbo got out of the rear naked choke and then beat, and I'm like, mm. all right, like it's almost oh. like when you're wrestling a little kid or something, and you're like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, God. like you, <laughs> like, you, like I didn't like, know Ken. I thought Ken pulled out of the fight. No, they fought in Bellator, and even even Rogan said there was something really fishy about that fight because they started off going like, almost like they 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 started off going head to head. You know how, like in like a wrestling match, where you're like, yeah, like, but like in a fight, they basically went. Right tie up. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this is complete bullshit. <laughs> like they both had each other's heads, and then they just like went off and, and stared at each other, <laughs> like you would see in a WWE wrestling match. Yo, what's up, people? I gotta talk to you about Game Time. Okay, GameTime.co. All right, I'm telling you. I'm excited for the NBA playoffs. It's been the best season of basketball I can recall in a long time. Super pumped about it. And Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of the NBA, which makes getting playoff tickets even faster and easier, which is great. I mean, I, who would want to go to a playoff game? Now, prices on Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets tip off. I mean, normally you, you would think it would go up. Nope, going down. And with killer last minute deals, all in prices. Views from your seat and their lowest price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets. Trust me, you don't want to go there and all of a sudden you're behind. You can't can't see anything. That that, that would suck. All right, uh, check out the Game Time app. Uh, I know there's a great bunch of NBA games uh, coming up uh, right now tonight. It's uh, the Knicks. The Knicks are playing um, the Sixers. And the Knicks got this. Okay, and I would love to go to that game. Okay, I, I would that would be amazing. I'm I'm from New York, so obviously I gotta go for the Knicks and the Lakers and pretty much whoever else is winning. All right. And uh I'm telling you, they got last minute deals, they got flash deals, zone deals, easy to find. You could buy MLB tickets and for every kind of event in your area. They got views from all seats in the venue, lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, job loss protection. If you get fired, you can't make it, something happens. All right, now. You could save up to 60% buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater. All right. I know you guys love the theater, especially this audience, Broadway. You guys uh, love Shakespeare. I'm sure we got some, some very Shakespeare people. All right. Now, and uh, they also have in-app deals. They got zone deals. Save even more when you choose a section and let game time choose the seats. You got all in pricing. This feature shows uh, total upfront. No surprise. That's the worst when you go to other things and all of a sudden you're like, oh, this is a great deal. And you get there and it costs you an arm and a leg. So take the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets with Game Time. Now download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. That's great. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code CLNS for $20 off. Download Game Time today. All right. Check it out. I'm telling you, this is it. This is what you want to do. Do it now. All right. And I'll also enjoy the rest of this podcast. Um, that fight and and look, I love Don Dan Severn is is the one of the best fighters ever. You know, I love Dan Severn, but he had a, he had a fight that I watched against a guy that came to my show, Shannon Rich. Where he was taking Shannon and he suplexed him, but it, he he kept suplexing him, 
And I, and I asked him and I'm like, OK, Dan, was this fight a work? And he's like, yeah, he goes, it was that easy. But I was able to just keep suplexing him. But I don't know about that one, too. Uh, Wait, what, what happened with that fight? Did Dan lose that fight? No, Dan threw him around the cage in Hawaii. But it looked like he was just taking him and just throwing. He was, I don't know, maybe Severin really is that good. But 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 she, look, I love, I like Shannon Rich a lot. He's a, he's a friend of mine. But yeah. I, but I think yeah. he has like 13 losses in a row, all by standing guillotine. <laughs> like, hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> Where like he just kept walking into standing guillotine just somehow. It, it's just it's a little odd. Like you would think after the the seventh standing guillotine loss, <laughs> you would figure out that maybe walking directly into a guy's guillotine is not the, the right. Thing. Not a good thing. But Shannon, Shannon used to show up for a check. You know, he would show up for a check. Yeah, he you know he's fighting. Remember that guy Titties that Rampage kept calling Titties in the Ultimate Fighter. <laughs> there was a guy, yeah. named, a guy named Daryl Schoonover that was on um, the Ultimate Fighter, and his name was Titties. But he, he his name wasn't Titties, but he he had big titties. And Rampage <laughs> had the entire country calling this guy Titties. Uh, this poor guy. Anyway, Shannon Rich is boxing Titties in uh, in uh, Qatar coming up. I'm, I'm sure that. Right. I'm sure it would be very legitimate. So here we are with Garrett Armfeld. Garrett is a uh, ten and two monster fighter, uh, up, badass bro? kid. And like you, Don, uh, you know he actually tweeted out that like two years ago he was feeding his mom's goats on the farm. He was, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. he was a goat. He was a goat herder, and, and and now he's in the UFC. How many goats does your mom have, Garrett? Uh, well, three. And then one died in my nephew's arms as they were taking it to oh, the goddamn wow. vet. So now we're down to two. And get this. You know what their fucking names are? You ready? Yeah. Willie and Nelson. I oh, love it. <laughs> Willie and Nelson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my, hey, what's up, Don? Big fan, man. Uh, and then my, Thank uh, you. My, How you doing? Hell, I'm doing good, man. Not too bad. It's a pleasure to be able to hop on with you guys. But um, yeah, man, uh, that whole story. Shit, you know, I was actually at happy hour with uh, with my dad getting drunk on margaritas. Um, I was home for Fourth of July weekend, and uh, I had just smoked a joint, and then I got a goddamn call to go fight for my uh, first UFC fight. So oh, I went shit. to the airport, twisted as hell, hopping on a freaking uh, spirit plane. <laughs> wow! <laughs> wow! So and, yeah. and and that was a short notice fight. That was short That's notice. True. That was and you know what, David Onama. And you fought him as an amateur, right? Yeah, I fought him as an amateur too. Yeah. Tell you what, get, getting choked out on TV, I never thought it would make me so happy. <laughs> Why is, that? is that because you knew you were going to have a, another fight in the UFC? Yeah, 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 of course. You know, I got to get on ESPN and shit. So, uh, yeah. you know, let me tell you, the brights are super damn light. Like the brights are extremely, the lights are extremely bright whenever you open up your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> they're getting now, choked out. Did, did you know Jesus. what happened? Did you know where you were and what happened? Yeah, 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 yeah. How did he get you? What was the choke? Arm triangle. Mm. By the way, uh, Don, he wrote on his uh, Twitter that, that you are the most American man of all time. What did you say? That there's not another. He wrote Don Fry because I told him he was going to be on with Don Fry. And he said, Don Fry is uh, what, what was your what was your tweet? Uh, one of the greatest Americans of all time, you know. Thank you. Thank when you think when you and you got a goddamn cigar in your goddamn hand, that's fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> when you when you think of when you think of Americans, you think of Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, Don Fry, and Donald Trump. So hell yeah, ah. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, baby, yeah. You're my oh, favorite yeah. person. <laughs> so so Garrett, you grew up in uh, Missouri. Yes, yeah, yes, sir. Uh, it's called Eureka, Missouri. And you were boxing at what? Seven years old? Yeah, 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 yeah. Seven years old, first kid boxing match. Wow. wow. And when did you start wrestling? Oh, not till high school. And I fuck, I sucked. <laughs> I sucked at wrestling. Oh shit! I think my my senior year record, I was like ten and thirty. No way. <laughs> oh, I was awful. Oh god, yeah, yeah, I was goddamn terrible. I don't know why. So I mean, so if you're ten and thirty. So what made you uh, go pro at fighting? 
uh, just really good at punching people in the face, I guess. So um, I'll just keep it standing. And uh, shit, um, uh, David Onamo was actually my last amateur fight. So then after that one, I was like, oh, well, shit, you know? Because uh, actually, we had signed on the contract that we were going to allow knees to the head as amateurs. And then I got kneed in the face like 15 times. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, oh well, shit, if I'm already getting kneed in the face, I might as well get fucking paid for it. Yeah. I mean, you got a good point. So then you go down to Florida. Now, when do you go to Florida? Oh, uh, I went down to, um, sorry. I went down to Florida in uh, 2019. Um, I went down to, uh, it was called Hard Knocks at the time. And then uh, I went to Sanford and then Kill Cliff, you know, sponsor name changes and naming rights. But, I actually just moved back to Kansas City a year ago. So, um, yeah, man, it was a good time to be there in Florida. Um, you know, it was uh, it was definitely an experience and uh, something I'm glad I got under my belt. And, uh, you know, I feel like you got to to find who you are. You got to get away from home to real, you know, to figure out who you are. And then I feel like I found myself once I got back to Missouri and I started putting these ones together and uh, my career outlook drastically changed. I was watching an interview that you did and you were bartending while you were in the UFC. Oh, I still do. You still do? <laughs> hell yeah. Hell yeah. So you still bar now are people coming into your bar and they're like, that guy's in the U. I mean, that's gotta be crazy. I mean, mostly it's just people asking me about my ears, you know. Uh, you know, because I got I got some I got like full blown cauliflower ears on both sides. Um yeah. yeah. Are you like a are you like Jake Gyllenhaal in Roadhouse? Sometimes you have to like uh Throw some people out. Uh, not yet. Not yet. okay. I work this place. I work at this place. I bartend at is a um like event center. It's a chick. It's a pickleball event center. It's called Chicken and Pickle because there's nothing to fucking do in Missouri except play pickleball. <laughs> <laughs> so and get drunk. So uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that's where I work at. And uh, you know, people are uh, people are starting to kind of like notice me. I guess a little bit more. I guess. But um, yeah, it's a cool ass place to work, you know. Show up, make some drinks, talk to some dads. I'm not mad about it, you know. We had uh, your opponent on last week. Your next opponent. Oh, you did? Yeah. yeah. Your next. What'd she say? Ha. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> he's he's really good at cardio. He says he he can weaponize cardio. Uh, because a lot of fights he's losing, yeah. but he just he just ends up winning in the third. His last fight, he he was getting his ass kicked and won. Um, how are you preparing for this dude? Well, I mean, uh, shit, that's what they said about Brad Katona too, is that he can weaponize his cardio, right? And uh, I did fade a little bit in that third round, but um, to be completely honest with you, um, I usually get people out of there within within the three rounds. So whenever I had that third round get to me, I had that mentality of, oh, it's the third round, I have to be tired when I'm doing unlimited, I do cardio so much just to improve it. And uh, I feel like my mentality has changed now that, you know, I could be, I am a five round fighter and I do have the cardio to go all five. Uh, you know, nothing taken away from Brady. He's a great fighter. He's in a great opponent. He's got good wrestling, good ground and whatnot. But, um, you know, he's never fought a Garrett Armfield before. I've fought a million Brady Hines stands. I mean, I fought David Onama, Ronnie Lawrence, Brad Katona, all these guys who are standout UFC fighters. And, um, you know, I, I, uh, he's not my hardest opponent to date, but I treat him as, as I'm standing across from Sean O'Malley. You know, everybody's just a champion that I face. That's the mindset I want to have with this fight. And so I know Brady's going to come with a great skill set and great cardio, but, you know, I'm here to face the best fighter that is fucking there, man. I don't care who the fuck you are. You know, I know you give him size, give him strength. It does not fucking matter until you see my fucking skill set that I bring into the cage. It's going to be a different ball game when I walk in there. I'm, I'm excited for this fight. Don, uh, he, um, by the way, uh, his last fight was against a guy who won the ultimate fighter twice. This guy went on the ultimate fighter. He won it. Then got cut from the UFC Went back on the Ultimate Fighter, won it again, <laughs> and then and then uh, Gary just beat him. But uh, do you think they were kind of? I mean, you were underdog in that fight, right? Yeah, yeah, it was underdog. I, I figured I would be. Do you think they were trying to give him a fight where they thought he was going to win? I don't know. Maybe because it was in Canada, you know. 
and yeah. I was coming off like a good first round knockout. So that could have been the case, but um, shit, cool. <laughs> I you know yeah, yeah you know it was it was it was a kind of an opportunity for me to you know step into the spotlight a little bit and get my name out there. Ladies Boy. and gentlemen, comes officially four minutes and sixteen seconds. <laughs> round number one, one, your winner by T. Right, hold on. Oh. Yeah, all right, hold on. Let's see. Oh, Fucking amazing. <laughs> I, uh, I, don't, I can't really put into words what to, like, to describe. Um, you know, it was just like it's just such a crazy thing, bro. I, I made it to the UFC and then I was out for a year. Um, you know, like I said in the interview, and I, you know, I had a staff infection that one time, you know, and then after that, I got to the uh, weigh in day and then my opponent failed his medical exam or his eye exam. So then I couldn't fight again. And then I got, as soon as I got back from home, I had pink eye for a month and I was bedridden for a month. I was living at my girlfriend's parents at the time. I fucking had what? no money, couldn't even pay for yeah, fucking what? rent. Wait, what, wait, pink, what you have? pink eye for a month. Oh, pink eye. From, where did Don't, you get that from? Uh, fucking a fucking a nasty fart. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. I think uh, somebody brought it into the gym and it spread like wildfire and like 50 people got pink eye. Jesus oh. Christ. Oh my god! I had double pink eye. I couldn't see for. Did you get staff years. infection from the same gym? Yeah. Don't go to that gym anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, know, I, know. I, mean, I, Dude, I remember one of the, one of the guys brought ringworm into the fucking gym. Oh, of course. Fuck. Uh, uh, got it. Uh, and yeah, and then the sons of bitches everywhere. They'd line up, you know, and I, and I had them circled up and said, "Check yourselves." And one guy done. Is this ringworm? You son of a bitch, get out of here! Oh my god. Fuck. So you're living at yeah, your girlfriend's house. So you're living at your girlfriend's house with her parents? Ex-girlfriend at the time. And are they judging you? No, no, no. They're uh, they're from New York, so they're like very brash people that don't give a fuck. Um, I mean fuck, they had like fifteen cats and five dogs. I should <laughs> not. I'm not making any of this up. <laughs> I swear to God. Um and uh so I'm like living there and I talking to her dad who uh you know, he was like, uh, he's one of those, like, they, they had money, you know, they started their own business and stuff, but he was like a former junkie that turned his life around. Oh, shit. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, very generous people. And one day I was like, man, I think I need to move and get out of here. And he's like, well, you fucking better do it soon because, you know, you're not getting any younger. And so mm. um, I actually had uh, me and that girl, we just didn't get along and whatnot. So, you know, she was a partier. I was a fighter. So it didn't work out. And um, we had gotten in an argument one night, and of course she pulled up. This is my house. Kicked me out of the house and shit, whatever. So I'm sleeping in my car one night and didn't sleep. And then I was like, no sleep. And I think this is why I made this decision, like a very like um, in, like uh, like impulsive decision. Was fucking got on the phone with my manager at like 7 a.m. after not sleeping. Told him I needed to check out a new gym. He told me Kansas City's with Trey Ogden and Marathon in May. It's a good school. I booked a flight. Like some of like the last money I fucking had in my account. I was like, fuck, I got to get out of here. I got to figure it out. Went there, checked it out, liked it, moved out the next day. Or when I got back, moved out the next week. Um, and then got this call to fight in Singapore like two months later. And I'm like thinking, wow. oh, shit, this is a huge fucking obstacle to go fight overseas on three weeks notice. Um, and I so I just said, fuck it, let's do it. Like what's like what else am I going to wait for, you know? So I went there and I, I killed that fight and I knocked him out in the first round. And then next thing you know, I'm sitting here like, oh my God, when I as soon as I thought that my career was dead, I thought because I thought my career was done, to be completely honest with you. I thought that was like the, the what I had. And uh, I was I was like ready to come to terms into it. And uh I knocked that dude out. And then next thing you know, just everything falls into place. I get to go to Singapore and I get to go to Canada and fight Brad Katona. And I beat him against I didn't think I was gonna be able to beat him against uh, at decision, I thought if I was going to beat him, it'd be by finish because he's the decision master. He beat Bryce uh, Bryce Mitchell and Kyler Phillips. No way Garrett Arnfield could beat this man to a decision. And I went out there and proved myself wrong. And now I'm just thinking all these fucking opportunities I have ahead of me. And, and you know, I know that I'm my own biggest fucking critic and I'm my own biggest fucking opponent is my head. So now I'm at this point now in my career where I'm like, I've seen the worst. I've been fucking down and depressed and beat up and wanted to quit, and just get rid of everything. But uh, for some reason, I just haven't found the right reason. I just keep fucking having reasons to keep going. And uh, 
now it's like I have this fire in me that I really believe that I could be in the best in the world. I have the team behind me. I got the gym behind me. And uh, fuck, bro, it's it's like a, it's, it's a beautiful thing. You know, if you just never quit, you know, sh- shit starts falling into place. So that's awesome. Uh, yeah. Now, were you, a, were you a Don Fry fan growing up? Fuck yeah, I was. I used to watch, actually, uh, I used to watch on um, YouTube. It was like Pride FC bloopers. And it was like featuring a bunch of shit about like with him and Charles Crazy Horse. I liked them both so much. They're they're just, they're both so fucking exciting. Because back when I fought in the UFC, you know, it was NHB. And, uh, you know, it was was borderline illegal. You know, they were trying to to legalize it everywhere. And then, um, then, then Pride, Pride was just such. The UFC back then were in, you know, small arenas, you know, 5,000 people maybe. You know, and then... Um, you go to the Satyama Super Center. Yeah, so yeah, you know, 48,000 people, you know, shit. You're talking, you know, a hell of a, hell of a crowd. Yeah, that's that's insane. Now, what about the, uh, uh, the, 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 like, one of your most infamous fights is when... Um, you and the guy are just uh, single collar tie punching each other in the head Akiyama. over and over. Akiyama, Akiyama. Yeah. Did you guys have a beer together afterwards? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, fucking, well, we know, both had to go to the after party. You know, it's one of the requirements. You know, if, <laughs> yeah. if you don't go to the hospital, you go to the after party. And even if you go to the hospital, you try and make it to the after party. You know, it's in your contract. You know, is it really? Wow. No shit. Are you fucking serious? Because they probably want yeah. the appearances and whatnot. That's yeah. crazy. That's so funny. So if you're not in the hospital, you're required to go to the after party. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Oh, they sell. <laughs> they the fucking Japanese sell everything on you, man. Every fucking breath you take, they sell. Yeah. So, so I Gavin, they give you a uh, do you have a girlfriend now or no? I do. I do. She's, uh, we met on the bus in the seventh grade. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm asking to marry me this year. So, wow. The four weeks ago. <laughs> it, was yeah, a short, right? it was a short bus it was a, it was a short bus and it was yeah. the bus driver so it's a little weird I was actually she was the one that was helping me out <laughs> <laughs> she was the tutor <laughs> she was, yeah, she's actually a school teacher too so oh, yeah. uh, she was yeah, a school yeah, teacher yeah, so and you guys live on a farm or you guys no no we rent an apartment we don't own a farm yeah, man. do you miss Mama. goats do you miss goats? Come on, goats are the best, right? Oh, I fucking love goats. You kidding me? Yeah. I fuck I fucking love them. I, I was just back home over the weekend in St. Louis and fucking feeding them watermelon. They're fun, aren't they? <laughs> They're a lot of fun. <laughs> the interesting thing about chickens is that chickens are like um like like obviously domesticated, but they follow you around. So like my dad's chickens, like fucking they love them. Like they'll he walks out and it's <laughs> like their fucking dad. They'll fucking walk follow him all around the goddamn yard. That's so yeah. funny. Awesome. Uh-huh. That's awesome. Well, listen, man. I mean, you're such a likable guy. You're funny as hell on uh on Instagram and Twitter. I'm always retweeting your stuff. I, I want I appreciate you to become, it. I want you to become more popular because I want you to get paid more. Uh but One day at you know, a time. I mean you like deserve it. I mean, you're a great fighter, solid guy. You seem like you got your shit together. Uh now the the camp you're in now, are you at a big team or a small team? Small team. It's Miles Johns, Trey Ogden, Mike Breeden, uh, myself, and then we have a bunch of guys that are like seven and zero, six and zero, six and one, five and one on the regional scene. Um, yeah, yeah. Honestly, I you know this is like kind of my mindset behind all my trainings. I used to train at Kill Cliff where everybody was a fucking killer, but the problem was that is that you can't learn anything because everybody's so damn good, um, and it's not due to the instruction. It's just that there's nobody to beat up on to learn shit. So now I'm at this, I don't have a whole range of training partners where like, you know, it's like, it's like getting your fucking life. It's like trying to learn how to drive and then hopping in a fucking NASCAR race and trying to learn how to drive there. So, yeah. you know, you got to take the back roads first and learn your fucking way around a wheel before you can hop on the NASCAR track. So I, uh, and obviously there's probably a lot more to do with than that shit, but, um, so yeah, I, you know, a lot of my rounds are with, uh, you know, non UFC fighters and guys that are, you know, they're quality guys, but on the regional scene and um man it's it's like shit i've been there for a year now and like 
I just feel like I myself, I actually feel myself improving every month. So, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna Where, where's your biggest hole? Where are your biggest holes in your game that you want to fix that you want to improve? My, my biggest hole is that I want to and fix in, in the uh, goat's ass. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. <laughs> uh, I would have to probably say communication with my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they'll no, never no. fix. They'll never get fixed. Never, 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 right, right. They'll never fix that one. <laughs> I just gotta throw money out there once I get mine. You know, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I would say definitely. Uh, you know, my wall defense. I would say is probably my biggest hole right now. Um, and that's something I'm working on every day. Uh, or when I switch southpaw, um, working on like my amper, like both sides of being good at both sides. So now, Miles Johns, you posted a picture of him holding a rattlesnake. Yeah. Did he just find it? Yeah. So he's a fucking country boy. He, uh, I get his. He's from the middle of fucking Kansas. Like I guess where like fucking Dorothy's from. And uh, there was a <laughs> snake on the. There was a snake on the road. And his sons were like, oh, dad, you won't pick that up. And he was like, fuck him. He's got four boys. He's 29 years old, has four boys. And uh, so he's like, fuck it. Went out there and picked up the snake to show his kids that it ain't nothing to be fucking afraid of in life. And I'm thinking, dude, you're fucking crazy. There's no way in fucking hell I'm picking up a goddamn snake. I mean, couldn't a snake have been poisonous or like, he didn't? he wasn't worried about any of that? I, I, he's a different, he's a different motherfucker. He's different, man. He's different. Don, you ever have snakes on your ranch? Yeah, yeah. It's funny, but shit, about 15, 17 years ago, my girls were little. Um, I was following my, my ex-wife and my girls, you know, and uh, oh, we were married to this, and my wife's my girls, I had my, my truck, and they had stopped, and they were looking at a snake, so I stopped, I get out, and I walk up there, and I hear girls to tell you pick up a snake. Get behind the head, you know, you reach behind the head, get it, and you hold on real tight. You know, you want to get directly in behind. And I got it about an inch behind the head. And it didn't have, apparently I didn't have a tight enough grip. It spun around, <laughs> bit me in the hand. I go, so that son of a bitch. And my wife looks at me and says, you're an idiot. Just drives off. And I stand there in the middle of the road with a hand bleeding. Look at my family drive off. You know, and the snakes over there. <laughs> Wait, did it did it get its teeth in you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, was it poisonous or no? No, it was just a bull snake, but they act like a rattlesnake. You know, they <laughs> they act like a rattlesnake. Have you ever seen Happy Gilmore? Yes. Where in the fucking the crocodile takes the dude's hand, bites off his hand. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he figures out which one, which fucking crack a crocodile that is. Right. And fucking jumps it and tries to fucking choke it out. I hope yeah. he found that fucking snake again and beat the fuck out of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually my belt right now. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's my belt. Actually, that snake, that, that snake after biting me, it turned into a twenty foot fucking um a killer. A fucking <laughs> python, a boa constrictor. Yeah. Don, by the way, uh, did he have you in a heel hook in the second round, too, or no? Or third? Who, the snake? Hell, I don't know. No, Shamrock. <laughs> Thanks, bro. No, Shamrock. Thanks, You're talking 20-some years ago, boy. It was still one of the best fights ever. Well, thanks, thanks. How did that fight end? Don won in overtime, right? It, won. it uh, went to a um, decision. Yeah, Don which, won. And they... they is a split decision, which I thought was bullshit. Should have been unanimous. But did Ken shake your hand afterwards and say, "Hey, you got the best of me"? Or no, he didn't say that. We shook hands. You know, said, "You know, I, I apologize for being a dick to him." You know, and told him I respected him. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's no beer, all, you know, no beer all, afterwards at the after party. It was all good, clean fun. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen, Garrett, uh, great. Where can people follow you? Uh, Garrett Arnfield, 135 on Instagram, and then Arnfield, 135 on Twitter. Um, yeah, and then I fight June 15th against Brady Heinstein, uh at the Apex in Vegas. So. Nice. And I also want to get one of those shirts. I'm going to order one of those shirts. The big head one? 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck yeah, yeah. Please do, bro. I, I really appreciate it. You know, right, I'm gonna order one today. So, hey, you no, know, hey, yo, thank you guys for so much. Wait, no, hold on. Why time. did you go viral though? I don't understand. Like, you held up the gloves. What happened? ESPN shared it. Yeah, it's like ESPN Sports Center and whatever shared it, and uh, they put it on their page, and then people just started calling me Mega Mind, and so then uh, <laughs> you know, fucking big ass noggin on me, you know. I'm well, only five. Well, what was the My hair's gonna look fucking huge. What was the difference in the gloves? That's why you gotta grow that. Keep growing out that, that beard, man. Grow out that beard. But, but basically, you, you, oh. you like held up the new gloves and the old gloves, and what were the difference? Like it was. Oh, dude, I, the little gloves are fast. Oh shit, there's way I like it. The, you know. It's like makes it just kind of it makes sense. Like, what was one sport where they changed like the size of the ball? It might have been basketball or baseball or football, but they changed the size of the ball by like I can't remember how much. They made it smaller or bigger, and like it made the game way more exciting. I think with these new gloves is that you're gonna see more knockouts and more submissions, and uh, they're like an. See, so you have your fist right. Uh, like UFC gloves go out a half an inch on each side. These sit flush with your skin on each side. Oh wow! Yeah, so I think it's going to be a big game changer. A and, lot more uh, hammer fists coming out. Yeah. A lot more hammer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, shit, we're like one step away from bare knuckle. Wow. Yeah. Well, thank you, man. I'm I'm going to order that uh, t-shirt today. And uh, take care, brother. Yo, thank you guys. You guys have a good day. Okay. Charging, good charging man. double, good charging double. <laughs> good guy right there. Good solid. Yeah, he is. I like him. Yeah, yeah. Good. I like those stories where, like, I was in my car, I didn't know what to do. Yeah, and then, you know, it's crazy, right? It all happened. It's crazy that he's still bartending, though. Also, like, for for better or worse, I mean, you're not going to see a guy in the NBA bartending, you know? Um, yeah. Or a guy in the Major League Baseball. My friend was trying to tell me yesterday that the WNBA is going to be humongous. That that right now it's it's the new GameStop. And that he sees it being like one of the biggest sports now because of the Caitlin Clark and all this other stuff. Do you see no that at way. all? No. No. You know what? I think I think it's gonna be interesting to see how they treat that poor gal. You know, because once she's white, you know, then two, you know, she's, she's kind of pretty, and uh, three, you know, they're gonna see how they treat her. If they beat her up, you know, or they or they. Uh, you know, try and take her out, you know, oh, yeah. or if they understand that she's going to boost the, boost the fucking ratings. Well, she had 10 turnovers yesterday. She had 20 points, but 10 turnovers, which is not, oh, she's already playing for the WNBA. Yeah. 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 Her first game was yesterday. And, um, oh. and then they had this girl on her team who's like three feet taller than her was like boosting her up. It was kind of cool to see, but she's like, we got your back. You can do this. But she did have 20 points, but she has 10 turnovers. So obviously they kind of figured out like she's got a little bit of a, of a learning curve. Um, but I think she'll be fine. You know, um, I, I I still think a lot of times the best ba girls don't become basketball players because there's no money in it. You know, so I don't even know if the best af female athletes, basketball players are, are sticking with basketball. It seems like. You know, a lot of them are just going into finance or something or, you know, uh, or they're like, well, there's no money in basketball. But now that there's maybe some money in basketball, because I heard she sounded like a, some huge contract with like Allstate or something or Gatorade or yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Much, I don't know much about it. I do. But she seems like a really nice person, though. Like she's like how many people watch that game? Was it like some sort of record breaking number? I'm sure. I'm sure it was WNBA. I'm I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure it was. Uh, it was also on during the Nick game. So, uh, yeah. Um, but uh, there's some good fights this week. Uh, what, what's going on in Bellator? There's a guy who's a, a kickboxer. This guy, um, well, Patchy Mix, who I think is the best 135 in the world, or at least up there with O'Malley. He just in, he's in Bellator now, the PFL, so he doesn't get the credit. He's fighting Magomed Magomedov. There's a guy, Cedric Dumbe, who's 2-0. But he's a two-time glory champion. And as a kickboxer, he's like 75 and 7 or something. So he's in Bellator. And he's fighting this weekend. And then in the UFC, are you guys aware about the UFC fights or no? No. Uh, 
Uh, Edson Barboza is fighting Leroy Murphy. That should be a good fight. Uh, Chaos Williams is fighting Angela Hill. Angela Hill has 12 losses, 13 losses. And like 12 of them are by split decision. This poor fucking girl. That's crazy. Yeah. And then, uh, so she's fighting. Warley Alves is fighting. Uh, yeah. And a lot of people that know. And there's this girl, Vanessa Demopoulos, who used to be a stripper. And she wrote a book called The Stripper Bible. Um, and she's the one that every time she wins, she jumps in the reporter's arms. <laughs> she's fighting this other girl, Emily Ducott, who just beat Ashley Yoder. Uh, it should be a good fight. But anyway, uh, that's our podcast today. I don't know where this other girl is. There's, uh, I think Destiny Yarball, we'll have to have her on next week, the football player um, slash bare knuckle by fighter. Uh, what do you got coming up, uh, Don Fry? Shit, what do I got coming up? I got to go uh, over to San Antonio and do an interview um, about Pride. They're going to they bring me over there oh, nice. to film it. And um, I guess somebody doing some documentary on it. And um, then I've got uh, you got the other fights coming up, you know, so uh, non just typical Don Fry nonsense, you know. Nice. <laughs> Bill, what about you? Not just the Laugh Factory Wednesdays. That's pretty much it right now. And Eight o'clock. And I'll see you Friday. And Don, let me know about Friday. Um, yes, God. Don, you got to come. I got to meet you in person. I'd like to. I'd like to. Hey, go to adamhuntercomedy.com for my uh, my upcoming schedule. You guys are the best. Love you guys. Take care. See ya.